Blessings. May the spirit of the living God give you ears to hear. May he open your heart and mind to understanding and wisdom and bring forth clarity for your life through salvation, which means deliverance in Christ Jesus. I am Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. I want to give him a talk about faithfulness unto God and what does it mean to be faithful? The, the, that word faithful, you mean it means you're full of faith. And whether you place your faith in things you can or people, you can be faithful to that thing. But your importance of faith is in God. Your importance of having faith in God, it pleases him. It pleases the Father because faith without works is dead. And so you are created for the glory of God. Every human being, every man, woman, child born in this world is created for glory to the God of all creation, to Jesus Christ. You are created to be born again. You are born to be born again. So when you are born, naturally speaking, of flesh and blood, you have decisions, or you may have been born. Matter of fact, if you're born in a Christian household, both your parents are Christian, you still have a choice to choose Christ. And man cannot get a person into heaven. It's by the decision to make when you choose Jesus, when you are born again, when you are realizing that you can't do nothing without Jesus. And when I say that, I'm talking about nothing, no good works, no good deeds apart from Jesus can get you into heaven. And you, so you, you are created for God's glory. And when you finally make that decision, I want to be baptized and I want I want to live right. I don't want to lie no more. I don't want to steal no more. I don't want to do things that offends God. I am ready to be baptized in his glory and receive the Holy Ghost and to live for Jesus Christ. Paul mentioned that in Philippians, which we're about to get into. And so now you're on the straight and narrow way. You're seeking God in prayer. You're seeking God and worshiping him. You're seeking him diligently and he rewards those who diligently seek him. So Jesus Christ is the one whom you should believe and whom you ought to follow. And so the Pharisees in John chapter 8 confronted Jesus Christ after they try to bring a woman found and caught in adultery. And they try to find accusation, find fault in his doctrine. Jesus is truth. So truth offends those who are not in the will of God. Truth offends those who are living a lifestyle contrary to the will of God. Some people that are not believers love truth, but they don't know the percentage of the truth. They have only a certain measure of understanding that they know when they have truth. They know when they hear truth. And not they hear truth, but they may not fully apply it to the life. So the truth of your life is to choose Christ. So the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. And I'm going to read from verse 6 of John chapter 8. This they said, tempting him. So, no, verse 5, I'm sorry, verse 5. No, Moses, now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? Verse 6, this they said, tempting him. So they, the Pharisees knew the law. They have an understanding of the law of Moses, but not fully. These are the type that search the scriptures, but in them, they think they have eternal life. And likewise for professed believers or those who have a, 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 a small measure of understanding of what church is or what a Christian should look like. They don't have a, a, a sensitivity or a strong understanding of what a true Christian looks like. 
they have only a a understanding in their mind from what they see so the pharisees they try to tempt jesus that they might have to accuse him jesus stoops down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not so they're bringing accusation they brought this woman found caught in adultery and we found they, they, they're like moses commanded that such should be stoned we found this woman but what do you say Jesus is not paying attention to none of the accusation or what they know because Jesus knows all things. So he is God in the flesh. So while they are speaking, he is stooping down, writing on the ground. And in verse 7, it says, So when they continue asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And so that word is convicting because who is saying this the lord the lord when he speaks power is transmitted from his spirit whether it convicts you or doesn't or whether it encourage you whether you receive the conviction to prick your heart you're going to either do two things one or two things you're going to either receive it receive the conviction receive what is being said by the lord or you're going to reject and allow your pride in your heart to give you a a what what is called well it's going to manifest that you are not in belief of what this man is saying or what the lord is saying and again he stooped down and wrote on the ground now early in my faith and it depends on what translation bible or I heard preachers, ministers said that when he stooped down, he wrote the names of the individuals of the of the, the person. When he stooped down and wrote on the ground, he, he wrote down the names of the individuals. And that's nowhere in scripture because it's, it says in John chapter 8, he just stooped down as if he heard them not. And again, he stooped down again and wrote on the ground and they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out but one by one beginning at the eldest even to the last and let me see and jesus had was left alone and the woman standing in the mist so the word of god does not describe what he wrote on the ground but the point is the lord does not hear unrighteousness and false accusation that's why he ignored them even unto when he was uh, persecuted on uh, on the way to the cross, on the way to carrying the cross, they try to find find fault in him. They sent false accusations. Their accusations did not agree together. That's why they sent false witnesses, false witness, and that's an abomination to the Lord. If you read Proverbs chapter six, he who bears false witness is an abomination. Six things the Lord hates, yet seven are an abomination. One of them is is bearing false witness. And so, verse 9, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest and even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none by the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those of your accusers? Has no man condemned you? So, this is what it's going to be like when you stand before God as forgiven. Because when you confess your sins, your, your unrighteousness to God that you may have known deep in your heart and the Lord knows what's in the darkness. He knows what's in man's heart that if you do not confess, you will be judged by his judgment. And so when the woman was, it was just the woman and Jesus, the woman, where are those of your accusers? Has no man condemned you? She said, no man, Lord. And you know, automatically recognize that, that that is the Lord. No man, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. So a measure of understanding of what sin is, many people do not know. Many people act like they don't know because sin is an offense to God. In your heart, mind, and your deeds. 
your heart can be, you can be thinking thoughts in your heart that offends God. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You can have thoughts in your mind, racing thoughts, bombarding thoughts that you do not take responsibility of controlling that irresponsible um, judgment on your mind. You can be condemned for. You are responsible for controlling your thoughts. You are responsible for confronting thoughts in your mind and heart because God is seeking clean hands and a pure heart. Your heart must be pure before God because Jesus says, Bless all the pure in heart, for they will see God purifying your motives and your intentions because God is holy and you must understand that. So Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And so the Pharisees saying, trying to bring accusation, your, 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 your witness is not true. What do, you, what do you say right here? Let's see, where's it at? You bear, here it is. The Pharisees therefore said unto, unto him, you bear record of yourself. Your record is not true. So these are professed people that profess they obey the law of Moses. But they didn't, they have no comprehension of recognizing that Jesus Christ, what was spoken in the Old Testament, is revealing who Jesus Christ is. Is revealing Moses wrote about Jesus, Abraham, and the prophets. These was testifying of who Jesus is, the son, the coming of the just one. The coming of the Messiah. You have the major prophets. Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Jeremiah. You have the, the minor prophets. Nahum, Obadiah, uh, Joel. Um, you have the minor prophets. Uh, um, Jonah. Every writer of the word of God in the Old Testament. Is prophesying about the coming of the just one. The coming of the Messiah. Jesus Christ and the Pharisees had no understanding of that. They thought they were right with God by doing righteous deeds according to their understanding and their own discretion. So, so Jesus just flats out tells them, I go my way and you shall seek me and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. Now, what does he mean by that? Jesus is letting them know, I go my way. My, my way is the way to the Father. My way is the way to heaven if you follow me. My way if, is the way that if you believe and obey me, you will be where I'm at. But by the fact that they are sinners out of pride and uncleanness, they Jesus says, you will die in your sins. I go my way and you shall seek me and shall die in your sins. Because when they try to seek him, they wanted to kill him. And Jesus brings that very clear to their attention. He, he pointed out the truth between the two, between uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and, and everyone who did not believe and everyone who want to bring false accusation and find fault in him. He was blameless. And so Jesus says, I go my way and you shall seek me and will die in your sins. Whether I go, where I go, you cannot come. Then the Jews, will, will he kill himself? This is their mindset. The Jews hated Christ. This is their mindset. They, they didn't like the truth. They didn't like his doctrine. They hated what he was speaking because the truth offends what they was doing. Will he kill himself? Where I, Jesus replies, where I go, you cannot come. And he said to them, you are from beneath, meaning you are from the earth. You are on the earth. You think earthly. You think worldly. And your carnal mind cannot please the Father. You are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Now, what does he mean by that? He's completely telling them that I am from the Father. I am from heaven. I am from above. I came down and... The manifestation of the, of the Father, I was born to do the will of the Father. Jesus says in chapter 6, 
Labor not for the meat that perishes, but labor for the meat that endures to eternal life. He is that meat. He said it. His flesh is meat indeed. His blood is drink indeed. So if you drink his blood, meaning you believe on him fully, he wants you in him. He wants you in him believing so that he can change you from the inside out and be filled with the joy of his spirit because the joy of the Lord is your strength. You must believe that. So he's telling them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I said, therefore, unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you will die in your sins. So he's giving them instructions. If you don't believe who I am, that the father has sent me, that I am from above, that I am he who does these works because the father, I see the father working and I am working. I'm doing what I see of the father. My works is just, my works are true. And I'm, I'm healing, I'm healing diseases. I'm curing diseases. I'm raising the dead. I am casting out devils and I am doing the work of the father. And you believe me not. I am making the lame full and whole. I am making the hear, the deaf hear. I'm making the blind see. I'm doing all these works that I see my father is doing because I am from the father. He's saying that if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. So unbelief is God highly discourages unbelief. God highly discouraged unbelief. It's the, isn't that what it says in Revelation 21, verse 8? The first thing it says, as I turn to it, verse 8, it says, nope, it's the second thing. So, verse 8 of Revelation 21 says, but the fearful and unbelieving, the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake that which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So that is the place where God has prepared for those who don't believe, who don't trust in him, who will not receive his son, his only begotten son, the father's son as Lord and Savior. Who walk in this life and reject God. You can't reject God. So, yes. So you are, Jesus says, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I said, therefore, unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Paul mentions some, uh, a very powerful point in chapter 1. So, uh, regarding access to God. Regarding access, a few videos ago, probably like two or three videos ago, I talked about the tree of life. I was going in, I was referencing Genesis chapter 3, the last verse, the very last verse. This is after the fall of man. Man has sinned against God. The woman was beguiled by the serpent who was the devil. And so he get, they, they bit into the the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, evil, which was commanded by God not to eat or touch, lest you die. So man lost access to God, access to the tree of life. God sent cherubims with a flaming sword, turning every witch away, meaning there is no way of getting to the tree of life unless you will die. So man lost access. Uh, God was merciful to his creation because he loved whom he created. Man is created in God's image and his likeness. So you are created for the glory of God. You are to you are created for Jesus Christ and worship and serve him and obey him. Because the father clearly said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him, follow him. And in twice of an occasion, the father said that the voice from heaven said that. And so Paul and I know and, and let, me, let me mention this access to the tree of life. So the flaming sword was spinning around about 
every which way, preventing them from entering the tree of life. So that's access to the Father. And then Solomon, um, this, uh, the second king of, no, the third king of Israel. King David was the second, and Saul was the first. So Solomon, the son of David, he wrote Proverbs and mentions in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30, he says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. But the point of that verse, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. So the fruit, moving forward from Paul, by the Spirit, who mentions about the fruit of the Spirit and walking in the Spirit. He names all nine fruits of the Spirit, which is access to the tree of life. And Solomon also mentions in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 4, I believe. He says, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. So, meaning a edifying tongue, a, a tongue that speaks life and praises God. A tongue that is edifying in every conversation. A tongue that is seasoned with salt and grace and knows how to, how to answer every man. That's a wholesome tongue. A tongue that speaks with love. A tongue that speaks with wisdom. And of a sound mind and of a sound heart because a sound mind and a sound heart hears the voice of God, obeys the voice of God. So a, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. And so man has issues in the heart. Man has issues in the mind because of sin. Man has fallen short and lost access because of the fall of man in the garden. Because the tree of life was in the midst of the garden. Now, Jesus Christ was born into the world and obedience is necessary. Obedience is necessary for your life to spend forever with God. And so you deal with the issues of this world. You are commanded to, again, I make mention, you are responsible for the, the thoughts of your mind and the thoughts of your heart. And so you control thoughts, you Pull down thoughts by worshiping God, by meditating on his word. You confront thoughts with the word of God. Colossians makes mention that it, Paul says by the spirit, let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. What does that look like? Always meditating on Jesus Christ and his word and what is said in his word. Because you have the sword of the spirit. You have the sword of the spirit. And so when you deal with sin in this world, because you are if you are a Christian, you're supposed to be not of this world because you follow Jesus. So you deal with the issues of life. You may be get born again and God will take a, a particular sin completely away, wipe it completely away, away. But then you have the you have to grow. You cannot be stagnated. You can't say, okay, I'm saved. And now I guess I'm going to continue watching what I'm watching or listen to what I'm listening to. No, you, you are a tree. You are a tree. You are supposed to grow and bear the fruit of his righteousness because the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And Jesus says, as he rebukes the church of Ephesus for leaving their first love, so as in reference for the Christian, when you are not focused on God and you not praying anymore, not reading the word of God anymore, not even going to church, you are you have left your first love. Jesus says in rebuke and encouragement as well. He who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So Paul, by the Spirit, he says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 11, he's saying, he said, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So Jesus Christ is the access to the Father and access to the tree of life because he said it himself, he will give to eat from the midst of the of the paradise of God, the tree of life. When you overcome, when you overcome and, and go higher, God wants to promote you. God wants to pro 
progress want you to progress he wants to prosper you in your obedience to him let me read that verse again he said being paul by the spirit says being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by jesus christ to the glory and praise of god so again jesus christ is access to the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of god when you overcome he will give you of that tree to eat what is beyond that point, God will reveal it to you when you obey. In verse 22, he says, matter of fact, verse 21, now this is very powerful, Paul said by the Spirit. He says, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What does that mean? The Christian who is truly born again, we live for Jesus. You, if you are in... And not, I'm going to say this too, not all Christians are in healthy churches, but you, you would know that you are truly saved by God through Christ Jesus and know that you are purchased by the blood of Jesus that was innocent and that the fact that you believe, what do you do? You continue on believing. If God wants you at a church where you're at and, and a church is not healthy, you ask God for his will to be done to place you in a, in a healthy church. Many are called, but few are chosen. The way of the Lord is narrow. Few that be that find it. And if you're not in a healthy church, just continue to obey Jesus. Continue to seek the Lord. You have to stay on fire for God. God will point you in the right directions. Ask the Lord what it says in Psalm chapter 5, I like the way King David wrote it. It says, make your way straight before my face. Make your way. What is the way? The, the way of the Lord is straight and narrow. And when you apply the way of God, who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, when you go and follow Jesus, he will guide you into all truth by his spirit because that's the role of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is to guide with all truth, guide into all truth, guide man into all truth and sanctifies you when you follow Jesus Christ. So Paul by the spirit says, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So when you die in Christ, you gain him and much more abundantly. Life more abundantly. Everlasting life will be tangible. Yes, it you can it'll be tangible. You can, no man can fathom how beautiful heaven is. No man you can't fathom how you can't imagine how beautiful heaven is. There, there heaven is. There are colors that man has never seen before. There is a beauty that you cannot describe. That's access to the Father while you're here on earth. You have access to the Father. You have access to heaven through Jesus and obedience to him. For to me to live is Christ. Jesus is alive forevermore. He said in Revelation, I was alive, then I was dead. Behold, I'm alive forevermore. Jesus is coming at an hour no one expects. So verse 22, I love what Paul said. But if I live in the flesh... This is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose I wot not, meaning I know not. So what does he mean by, when he says, but I, if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor? He's talking about if I live in the flesh, the fruit of my, of my labor is to obey Jesus Christ. That's what it was Paul saying right here. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I know not. For I am in straight between two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. So the believer who is truly born again desires to be with Jesus. Whenever your time is up in, on this planet, on earth, heaven is so far more better than this life. Many unbelievers believe otherwise. Many unbelievers like I said in my last video, I encountered a woman and t she gave me her explanation of who God is and said that God, I, I speak to the higher power. And, and I asked, so do you believe there's a heaven and a hell? She said, 
heaven is and she gave me like a her uh foolish i'm gonna say foolish because that's what it was foolish analogy she said heaven is like you have children and you they enter into a candy store you are you create your own heaven and she said children that enter in a candy store and they see see all the candy that's their heaven and when she said that i'm like lord god what is she saying why is she saying she's not born again she's not converted she does not want to believe on the way the truth and the life she doesn't believe that that she believes in her own heaven which is false and she does not believe that she's going to hell if she dies in that condition in that mindset so i just left i didn't cast any pearls before swine i left it alone and then she, you know on my job she quit her job so to live is Christ, to die is gain. You gain the glory of God. You gain heaven. You gain the, the, the love of Christ at a measure you cannot even understand or comprehend. Words cannot form it. Words, human words cannot form it and, and utter it. That's why we have the gift of tongues. The gift of tongues is an unknown language that Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. The gift of tongues, many people that I have encountered in my, my walk, my 13 years of walking in the faith of Christ Jesus have blasphemed at a measure, saying that the gift of tongues is gibberish. When Paul says, I wish that all would speak in tongues. And he says, I speak more in tongues than you all. So is Paul speaking gibberish? No. The gift of tongues is an unknown language. The gift of tongues is a heavenly language between you and God. It is that it edifies you. Many people do not believe in the gift of tongues because they feel that it is silly. And that's borderline blasphemous. So if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is Lord because he said it himself, you will die in your sin. One of that sin that you would die in is unbelief. Unbe every unbeliever will have a part in the lake that burns with fire. You cannot enter in with unbelief. So, again, I quote this. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I know not. I, and, and Paul mentioned that. The righteousness of Christ is the fruit of his labor. That's what he's describing here. So Solomon by the spirit, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. And that's access to God again. Because man that fell short in the garden of Eden by sin, they fell short. They lost the way to the access of the tree of life because there was a flaming sword. Uh, uh, turning every witch away Preventing the way to the access of God The tree of life So you you have to make this um, Bold And I'm going to say emphasizing decision And it's the best decision of your life Choose Christ You live and you will live more abundantly for he is life and he is life more abundantly. You will be set free. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you and have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life for the Lord is our life and the length of our days. Life is described as an interval or space between birth and death. Natural life. To choose Jesus Christ is everlasting life. Life more abundantly. God prospers, progress you. You will grow to be a tree of righteousness. And bear the fruit of his righteousness. Because that's the will of God for your life. He is the true vine. The father is the husband man. Every branch in him that does not bear fruit he takes away, the Father takes away, and every 
branch that bears fruit, it he purges it so that it bears more fruit. Meaning, he will squeeze every unrighteous thing out of you through trials and tribulation. That the fact that you choose Christ and you choose to obey, it's it, it's, at times it hurts to obey, but when you choose to obey, God will bless you and takes away what you deal with. He will progress you. He will prosper you in obedience. So many people deal with idolatry. And idolatry can look like your, your favorite entertainer, your favorite uh, celebrity, your favorite... Um, or a person or a family member that you love spending time with or hanging out with that is not saved more than you spend time with God. The children of Israel, I made mention in my last video in Judges chapter 10. In chapter 10, they had a deliverer. The Lord sent a deliverer by the name of Jair. And it says he judged Israel 23 years and died and was buried in, in Shammar. And after him arose Jair. No, I'm, no, let me read verse 3 again. Let me rephrase that. So verse 2 wasn't talking about Jair. It was talking about Abimelech. So verse 3, it says, And after him arose Jair, a Gileadite, and judged Israel 22 years. And he had 30 sons that rode on 30 ass colts, and they had 30 cities which are called Havath Jair unto this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Canaan. So in the book of Judges, the Lord sends deliverers when the children of Israel, God's people, sins against them and starts serving other gods. He sends deliverers. And then they follow the deliverer. They follow the righteous one who is sent by God. But then when that, per when that deliverer dies, they go back to sinning. So after Jire, the children of Israel, it says in verse 6, they did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Ashtaroth and the gods of Syria, the gods of Zidon. Zidon is where Jezebel is from. And the gods of Moab and the gods of the children of Ammon and the gods of the Philistines and forsook the Lord and served not him. So they start serving idols, serving, worshiping other gods of these other different places that are full of devils. And what happens when you do that? Modern day time, what happens when you don't want, don't want nothing to do with Jesus, don't want nothing to do with church or don't know, don't want nothing to do with God. And you are in this world and you have no, no place for the God of heaven. No place for um, making that decision to obey or seek God. No, your heart is on other things and set on other things because your heart is out of the abundance of man's heart speaks forth the sinful nature of that person. And you have gods, you have idols in your life. This angers the Lord. So verse 7 says, and the anger of the Lord was Hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the children of Ammon. The Philistines, they did not like, they hated the children of Israel, the God's people. And they and since the children of Israel sinned against the Lord and stirred up his anger, they got sold into their hands and the children of Ammon. So, and they got oppressed 18 years. So I'm trying to find the verse. Let me see. And verse 11, and the Lord said to the, no, verse 10. And the children of Israel cried to the Lord saying, we have sinned against you, Lord, both because we have forsaken our God and also served Balaam. So they was oppressed by the punishment of the Lord being sold to the Philistines and the children of Ammon. They oppressed them 18 years. That's a long time when you have made a decision to serve other gods. And forsake the king of glory, the Lord God Almighty. God judges the children of Israel. And he, sell, he sells them to the Philistines and the children of Ammon. Moreover, the children of Ammon passed over Jordan to fight also against Judah and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim. So that Israel was sore distressed. They, these people was against the uh, Judah. That's also God's people. 
And so this, this made the children of Israel cry out to the Lord. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord saying, We have sinned against you, both because we have forsaken our God and also served Balaam. And the Lord, this is what the Lord says to the children of Israel. Did not I deliver you? He will, he will remind you of who he is and what he has done for you. He says, did not I deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites, from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines, the Zidonians also, and the Amalekites and the, Mo the Maonites did oppress you and you cried to me and I deliver you out of their hand. Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. So to hear the Lord say that. That will put a strong conviction in your heart to get right with him because he resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. And what was humble about the children of Israel? This is what they did. Where the Lord said, go and cry to your God, to the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. So the, this is the humbleness of the children of Israel. They said to the Lord, we have sinned. Do Unto us whatsoever seems good to you. Deliver us only, we pray you this day. And they put away the strange gods from among them and served the Lord. And his soul was, the Lord's soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Because when a true born again Christian do things that are unrighteous and is not the will of God. Paul talks about grieving the Holy Spirit, grieving the Holy Ghost. You don't want to grieve the Holy Ghost. I forget where there is. I think that's in 1 Thessalonians. Quench, you're quenching the spirit of God when you serve other gods. And when you have idols and you choose unrighteousness over righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So the children of Israel, they put away the strange gods from among them and served the Lord. And his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Then the children of Ammon were gathered together and encamped in Gilead, and the children of Israel assembled themselves together and encamped in Mizpah. And the people and princes of Gilead said one to another, What man is he that will begin to fight against the children of Ammon, and he shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead? So there comes in chapter 11, Jephthah, a righteous man the Lord sends. And we're not going to get into that in this chapter because... The point is, you are created for God. You are created to give your life, your mind, and your heart to Jesus Christ, who can redeem you and save you so that you can continue on with your access to the Father. Because no man comes to the Father but through Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the door to heaven. Jesus Christ is is the straight and narrow gate. He who enters in that straight and narrow gate will find pasture. He lays you down. <laughs> I love the way Psalm 23 puts it. And I saw that in a vision today at church. Um, I don't know if it's the will of God for me to share it. I'm not going to share it. No, I'm not going to share it on here. So, the Lord, he will prosper man when you obey. And he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. He wants to sanctify you in every aspect of your mind, your heart, and your body, your strength. Laziness is contrary to diligence. Laziness and slothfulness is a curse when you yield to the flesh of it. When you yield to unrighteousness and you yield to disobedience to God... God will give you over just like he did the children of Israel when they start serving other gods. He sold them over to the Philistines and the children of Ammon. So that was the punishment and that punishment was for 18 years. The, the Lord God is the same yesterday, to death, today and forever. He changes not. That's what it says in Malachi. He changes not. So when you humble yourself. Before the Lord of glory, because he, again, he resists the proud. He resists the prideful. A carnal mind cannot please God. It is enmity against God. But a spiritual mind is life and peace. 
a spirit mind is a renewed mind in Christ Jesus and you set your mind on him. You set your affections on the things above. Jesus is above seated at the right hand of the Father. Your, the things that are above is the kingdom of God and the things of it. The things of it, the Lord wants to give you more power, more glory to glorify him, more light to shine on your life. The prophet Daniel says in chapter 2, verse 22, and when he was in prayer to the Lord, he said, you reveal the, the deep and secret things. You know what's in the darkness, for light dwells with you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. He wants you to be a child of the light. You are a child of the day if you are truly born again. And your road to heaven is to continue enduring to the end by obedience to Jesus Christ. Deny yourself. What does that mean? Deny your flesh. Deny the, your own heart. Deny your own thoughts and conform to the image of Christ by obedience to him. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is the perfect will of God to obey Jesus Christ who is God and God is perfect for he said, be perfect for my father in heaven is perfect. That's a commandment. If you love him, keep his commandments. If you love him, obey and endure to the end, you will be saved. You are saved. You are being saved and you will be saved. That is the life of the Christian. Jesus Christ is Lord. Give your life away to him. Forsaken everything, even of your own good deeds. What did I, what, Brother Joseph, what do you mean by that? Forsaking from trusting in your own good deeds and throwing yourself on Christ alone so you can be redeemed and saved. Jesus Christ is Lord. Repent and believe the gospel that I preach to you and those who are saved as well, those who are truly born again, believe the gospel of Christ Jesus. It is the spirit of prophecy it is also the power of God unto salvation to all that believe. God discourages unbelief. He highly discourages that. And there's a place prepared for those unbelievers. So serve the Lord with gladness, with gladness and fear and trembling. I can't say my words right. Serve the Lord with fear and trembling and serve the Lord with gladness of heart. This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. This is for his glory.